Round two, we have an opponent. And yeah, keepable hand. Definitely a keepable hand. I get to go Naga Vitalist into Beneath the Sands, and that's good enough for me. From there, we can do almost anything. Probably not playing Hour of Eternity in Trap Suit, but we'll see. I really hope they don't kill the Naga Vitalist. Or we draw land for the Beneath the Sands. Either would be okay. Alright, whew. Get to feel a little bit better about myself. A little awkward at the tournament of Hailfire if I lose the Naga Vitalist, but... I mean... Uh... Wow. I didn't even get to finish my sentence on that one. <sighs> okay. Sure. Why do I even mention these things? I always say it, and I always get hurt on them. Magic is a cruel, cruel mistress. Cruel, cruel mistress. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're against the blue-red, like, tempo spells list, which is gonna be tough. Because they're already just going off. If they don't kill this right away, then I can block really well after this, but... Um, I'm gonna guess that they have an unsummon or open fire or any one of a million different things. No way I block here, because Devotee of Strengths get getting really good if we can untap with it. Ugh. Yeah, Emberhorn Mentor is pretty nasty. Alright, Unsummon does help a little bit. Oh yeah, they are super aggressive. Hmm. Oh, I wonder what trick they have. I'm gonna block this now. Yep. Brute Strength, the Spellweaver. I guess that was the reason to not block it and just block the Firebrand. So now he took extra damage from the Afflict, which is unfortunate. I guess we unsummon it, though. I can't really take all that extra damage. Yeah, I should have blocked the Firebrand. I just wanted to get rid of the Afflict if I could. I don't see us getting out of this one. Alright, I mean... We are losing the Devotee of Strength, but... I guess we get to block both creatures. They've got the Grim and Apron. No, we, we just straight dead on board. I shouldn't have even shown it. Because we've got the Grimen up. So it really doesn't matter. And I'm not going to be able to beat Emberhorn after that either. Yeah. Alright, this is going to be a little rough. Um, I want to take out the Countervailing Winds just because they're going to be so fast. I want another Unsummon or the Shed Weakness. Kind of like the Shed Weakness. We already have the double Unsummon. Let's split it up a little bit. I'm going to build a Shed Weakness, something they're going to try and Brute Strength and get them instead. So, yeah, I think that's the way we do this. I don't have any other really great changes to make, so... This seems like the way to go. Alright. We just need one land, and we've got the Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs, which is good. Not great against the Flicked, but good against everything else, and they don't... I mean, we only saw the one Afflict card. Hopefully they don't have a whole lot of Spellweaver Eternals, although it's fairly likely that they have a few. Land was a great draw, as you may have noticed. 
Guaranteed turn four crocodile crossing is not bad here either. Ugh, stupid spell weaver. Alright, I'm gonna beneath the sands because we don't really need the mana from the manolith here. Like, we don't need it untapped this turn. Manolith is essentially a two mana spell because it taps immediately. Beneath the sands doesn't, so this makes a little more sense. Honed Kopesh, equip it, deal us a ton of damage. Got it. I mean, I guess the... Oh, they're not equipping it. I don't even really want to block. It just feels way too... It feels too convenient. Unsummon. Hmm. Well, I think... Kind of like Croc... Put it on this, start racing a little bit. Now it doesn't sound amazing, but I can block later with this wall and return it and then get it back without the minus one, minus one counter on it. I'm not going to block now. Firebrand Archer number two. And equip Honed Kopesh onto Firebrand. Yep. Because essentially Spellweaver Eternal is unblockable with the Browse. Alright, so with the Afflict, I mean. And it's dangerous with the Browse. Oh, God. Wow, this prison deck is really good and drawing exceptionally well. It's gonna be tough. Alright. Croc of the Crossing. Hold up our unsummon and hope it's good enough. Can basically block anything. Kind of glad they didn't play that because every two points of damage from this Ramanap ruins is a little scary. Sinuous Striker, really good card. I have a feeling they're not attacking here. Yeah. I'm still just going to leave up the unsummon. Tenacious Hunter. Ooh. Alright. Kind of like the Dune Diviner. So we can unsummon. But Tenacious Hunter seems real nice. And we can still hold up the unsummon. So let's do that. And pass again. We're not in great shape, but we might be able to start chipping away at them. Wall is slowly getting there. Okay. Block with the Croc of the Crossing? I guess, hmm. I block with the Tenacious Hunter. If we trade... I'm actually okay just on summoning it. 3-3. I guess I'll go Croc. I don't think that the power really matters. The Vigilance and Death Touch is kind of important right now. Yep. Unsummoning the River Winder, or sorry, unsummoning the uh, Sinuous Striker if they do that route seems really good for us though. Because they have to discard a card to eternalize this as well, so it's a really good two for one. I mean, not crazy. They're not going to discard anything great, but anything at all is kind of nice. Uh, I want to start getting down to this Traveler's Amulet, but I think we need to just continue to build our board. 
I can't really gain life right now. I think that I'd rather Travelers hold up the Unsummon and... I don't think that I'm going to have the time to use the desert right now, and I want to actually get light land here so we can get to the Stripe River Winder. We need another threat. Uh-oh. Six mana. That's not Eternalizing Sinuous Striker, then. Or maybe they just tap too much? Did they think it was six and it's not? What are they doing? Okay. Yeah, I'm cool with that. And pop it. The island's gotta just moving Hone Kopash. Thinking. It's possible that it's an unsummon. I think that they're realizing they just don't need to do that yet. And pop off the Sinuous Striker, because nope. I would rather not. And I don't want them to have like a counter spell of some kind. There's certainly a kind of deck that could run like a countervailing winds or something. Ooh, another unsummon's actually really good for us. I'm pretty happy about that. So let's go Manolith. Uh Sack the Amulet. Get a swamp. Play the swamp. And we've got the Unsummon and the Dune Diviner up. Now Tenacious can start getting in. If they want a double block, I'm cool with that. If they don't, I'm also cool with that. I'm feeling pretty cool with a lot of the things. Man, I can't believe we're kind of pulling this uh, game out. Unsummon on it. Ow. That is a lot of triggers for a single spell. That's mean. Alright. Tenacious Hunter back. And... I feel like I just unsummoned their spell weaver. Okay, quit the Kopesh. Slowly picking them down with that. And this is actually working. Like, Dune Diviner plus Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs on this board is doing some work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can play the Striped River Winder. Alternately, I can get Tenacious Hunter down and the Frilled Sandwalla and still have the mana for this, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I can do that. It seems better. Just slowly keep gaining a little bit of life every turn and picking them down. I guess technically we're still at a... We're kind of at a lower life total because of the ramen up. We've got to remember that we're basically at six. Ew. And with Double Spellweaver, it's pretty scary because of the Afflict. That Afflict is a very real problem. They might just throw away a Spellweaver here. Nope. There's a certain point where chipping in on us to get us really low might kill us. Even if they're losing creatures just because of the Afflict. If they get a spell to play, two damage, I mean, that's, you're looking at, like, six unblockable damage, eight unblockable damage. Yeah. So I can get Sandwalla in. That's for sure. Maybe throw in Tenacious D as well. All right. Let's get them both.
I need to start getting them blocking. Oh wow, they're throwing away a Spellweaver? I'm very happy with that. Make sure I order the Spellweaver first. I'm not gonna pump the Frilled Sandwalla. Just wanna play the Shimmer Scale and leave up Dune Diviner here. And I think we have it. Yes! All right. Whew! Wow, that was a tight game to pull out. We did it. We sure did it. Whew. Yikes, yikes, yikes. That was tight, tight, tight. Probably, I could take out the Torment of Hailfire, actually, again. I know that I keep taking... <laughs> It's almost a sign that this card shouldn't be in our deck, but I'm thinking another unsummon is really not that bad of an idea. It just buys us time. It's all we really need against them. Because later on our deck takes over. Grind out enough incremental value. We've got way bigger creatures. We just need time to get to that. And unsummon does it. Plus, when we actually have our big creatures attacking and they try and do double blocks, then unsummon's a pretty big blowout. So, yeah, I'm gonna run it that way. Makes our mana easier, too. Just makes everything easier. It's almost like Torment of Hailfire shouldn't be there. And this hand. Yeah, I, I think I still keep it. We just need a single creature or a forest so that we can get beneath the sands online. I can cycle the Sandworm. I'm going to keep this. They're mulliganing. We're on the draw, too. Any creature, Traveler's Amulet, or Forest gets us out of this. And I, that's enough outs that I think we're okay. Especially with the cycle and being on the draw. Surprisingly enough, that does help. It just means that a slightly dicey mana situation becomes easier. Just pass, actually. Sad to cycle the sandworm. But it's not coming online for a little while anyways. We need the early game cards. We have the early game against them, too, which is another reason to keep this. Because we need a lot of early creatures. Ooh, Kendra Scrapper is gross. They have such a good deck. Alright, uh... Not the way I wanted to do it, but Manolith will do it, so. Or it's a lot slower than I would hoped, but at least we're getting there slowly. Taking five damage this turn, though, if we're lucky. <laughs> Weekly maintenance soon. And now everybody knows my production schedule. Alright. I think we go Ritualist. It's the best way for us to power out a bunch of stuff here. We can get a bunch of green out of it. If they don't kill it, which is pretty likely. Yep, there's the unsummon. They do only have one card in hand, so... Fortunately, it's Spellweaver. This is gonna be tough. I don't think we're coming back from this one. I would love to, but I don't think we are. I can land Stalwart and Devotee. Or just Tenacious Hunter. Stalwart and Devotee seems better. It does let me double block even the Scrapper. I won't be happy about it, but I can do it. Suppose I get a Tenacious Deed and held up the Shed Weakness, which is kind of cool. I don't know why I'm calling this Tenacious Deed, but every, for whatever reason, it's like it's not a demon, it's not like, a, it's a hunter, but I don't know. Just, it just feels like a tenacious D to me. 
They're exerting the Kendra Scrapper. Okay, well, I for sure do this then. Down to two. I can play two creatures next turn with an untapped land. Come on. Unsummon. That'll work. I'm okay with that. I will allow it. I am absolutely terrified of the ways they can deal us a point of damage, though. Because, I mean, all they need is a Ravenop Ruins and we're just straight dead. Shimmer Scale. Kind of like Tenacious Naga Unsummon. I can just unsummon it now. Then they're not using the mana. They're, I mean, they're still using the mana on their turn. Okay. Because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, I can do all of it. And I kind of need to flood the board here, so... Let's do that. Double green. And I guess that I don't actually need to do anything yet. Let's just wait. See what our opponent chooses to do. Because currently we can still block it. We're only trading the Tenacious Hunter off. They might not attack. Be surprised. Possible. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I suppose I could have tried for the double block, and then if they had a. Because they did show us a brute strength. I probably should have done that. I should have gone for the double block, allowed the trade, and then if they tried to do anything else, then I just have the unsummon. I'm thinking that I have the shed weakness, so I was thinking it was okay, but. Oh, wow. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'm just drawing what I need, so no problems here anymore. Fast turn. Which is really scary, because I need to start getting damage in before they can draw the ramen up ruins or something similar to just pop two damage at me. Okay. Well. I have either Shed Weakness or Unsummon available. And they did have the Brute Strength, which means Unsummon. Boom. Got him. All right. Yeah, that was a much better line. Glad I got to do it again because I topped out the other Unsummon. <laughs> Lucky me. Frontline Devastator. Uh, um, no struggle to survive, huh? Maybe? If I had struggle... Nope. It's good knowing you, opponent. Got so close. Darn. That was really close. Uh, I mean, if I shed weakness there instead... Do we block all of it? I mean, we're losing the Tenacious Hunter. The Kenra... Uh, sorry, it's in their hand. Uh, it would have been a 5-4, so it would have been an 8. We'd have been blocking all 8, but we would lose both. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to unsummon there. It's just unfortunate they had another Afflict creature right away. Darn. Afflict is an annoying mechanic, but it was a tight match. We did pretty well. I thought that I played decently. I obviously should have played the Unsummon differently the first time, and then we might have been able to uh, do something different with Shed Weakness in the second Unsummon, so to be fair, I, I did make some minor misplays there, absolutely, but I think that we played okay, and this deck held off against this 
really aggressive and well-constructed uh, blue-red tempo deck. Better than I expected, so just a nice little thought there. This deck is looking pretty good. All right, and I will be back for round three.